be seated. The book of Mark this morning, Mark chapter number four. And you'll see up here on the board what we're going to be preaching about here today, I think. Let's see. Mark chapter number four, Mark chapter number four. My God is big enough. Y'all think that's true? He's big enough to see me through the storm as we're going to see here this morning. Mark chapter four, very familiar story. The last part of the chapter. All right. Mark chapter four. And again, we're glad you're here today. I hope you've come to worship the Lord, be instructed in his word, fellowship with believers, evangelize the lost. That's what we're here today for, and we want to truly worship the Lord and let Him speak to your heart this morning. I don't know who this message is for today. Uh, Somebody here today needs this message, and somebody maybe tomorrow needs this message. And, uh, you know, I've preached uh, from this passage a number of times, and repetition is good. I talked about that Wednesday night. What what may not mean a whole lot to you today might, might mean something to you next month or even six months from now that may come back to your mind, something that's said here today. But we can all get something out of it, of course, but uh, uh, I hope it'll be a blessing to you today. Mark chapter 4, verse 35, again, a very familiar story. Jesus is on the Sea of Galilee with the, with the uh, disciples. And the same day when the even or evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? There's actually two kinds of fear that's in this particular passage. Fear of the storm and fear of the Lord. One of them's a good fear and one of them's a bad fear. And uh, these two types of fears here. So we're going to talk about that. And uh, again, it says, God is big enough to see me through the storm here this morning. Let's pray. Our Father God, again, you're so good to us. And thank you for allowing us to be here today and to be able to open your word. And to be able to look into it. I pray that these next few moments, that uh, there'll be uh, no distractions. And uh, Lord, that folks will open their hearts and their minds. And Lord, we'll want to hear from you today. Because Lord, if uh, we desire that, I know that you will. And I pray that hearts will be blessed, encouraged in their walk with you today. And Lord, if necessary, challenged uh, uh, in their thinking about things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fear is something that is common to the human situation. Am I correct? I I know that to be true because of what happened in 2020 called COVID. And boy, fear broke out on all sides. Everyone became just fearful and, and just scared to death. And how it's really kind of got to the point where it was very sad. Maybe today there's some kind of fear in your life. I don't know. Maybe there's some kind of fear in your life. Uh, Maybe you don't think that you're adequate enough for the challenges that are coming. Uh, You've got some kind of fear, something that you've got to face this week. Uh, Some kind of problem maybe you have. Seems like there's no solution to it. Uh, Some kind of fear going on in your life. And, and, and for some people, and maybe here this morning, and if not uh, this morning uh, going on in your life, maybe again tomorrow or maybe next week or sometime or, or in the weeks ahead, the wind is howling in your life. The storm is on the horizon. And you don't know what's going to happen and what's going to come. And so there's fear possibly involved. So what should you do? Well... It is, of course, through storms and through challenges and through adversities and through trials and through troubles and through problems 
uh, through hardships that we grow and change, especially in the matter of fear and a lack of trust. Really, fear is just really a lack of trust in the Lord. Worry is just a lack of trust in the Lord. Uh, and, and we have to go through these storms and we see God bring us through these storms and bring us out on the other side. And, and, and all of that worry and all that fear went for naught. And so the next time, hopefully when a storm comes up, we've learned and we're better and we've grown. You know, without storms in our lives, and again, if you're not going through one now, hang on, it's going to happen. And you've been through plenty of them in your life. Uh, it happens to us. Uh, we all go through tough times. If, if we didn't have any storms in our life, you would be a terrible person to be around. You would be so full of yourself. When everything's going good, you know, and, and there's no trouble in your life whatsoever, you get to believing that, uh, man, I don't need God and I don't need anybody else for that matter. And you would be so full of yourself, uh, we wouldn't even want to be around you. Well, the Lord uh, talks to us about storms here. Great story. And uh, we can learn a lot from this story. God wants to develop us through these storms. And He is very capable of delivering you with just a word. With just a word. The Lord Jesus Christ that you know today that lives in your heart that through the Holy Spirit, He's the same one that was on this boat that calmed that storm that day, folks. The same one. It's the same God that was there that lives in your life today. And so... I want to exercise my faith and drown my fear. Now, they thought they were getting ready to be drowned. Let me tell you something. I want to drown my fear. I want to drown my worry. Uh, because, see, when faith is active, fear vanishes. And I'll remind you of something. Faith and fear cannot be both present in your life at the same time. Faith and fear cannot both be present in your life at the same time. It's either one or the other that's going on in your life at this time. And so when we have a life crisis, we need somebody who is big enough to uh, deal and to over deal with the problem and to overcome the problem. And I got news for you this morning. I know a God who is big enough to take care of the storm, to see me through the storms of life. All right, let's talk about this story and what's going on here. First of all, we see the Lord Jesus Christ had had a very, very busy day. Now, we're not going to go back and look at the uh, rest of this chapter before the end of the chapter here, but Jesus had had a busy day. You even realize here that he had been dealing with a multitude of people. Uh, he actually began his day with the Pharisees and religious leaders accusing him of being in league with Satan. And uh, then, uh, after dealing with the religious leaders, uh, he had to deal with his family. His family had come to do an intervention. You ever heard of an intervention? They had come to do an intervention because they thought he was crazy. And they had come to take him by force and was going to get him out of all this. Now, it's just amazing to think about. You can go back and read that when you get home. But that's what they were going to do. They were going to take him home by force. And then he had been teaching... Uh, the people on the, on the seashore and in the boats around him from a boat that uh, in the Sea of Galilee there, and he'd been teaching all day long. So when evening was come, Jesus said, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Now, here's a question for you. Is everybody listening? Everybody paying attention? Anybody's stomach growling around you? Everybody's paying attention. Guess what was getting ready to happen out here when Jesus said, let's go to the other side. He was getting ready to be a storm. Now, did the disciples know there was going to be a storm? Oh, no. They didn't know that. But when the Lord said, let's go to the other side, did he know there was going to be a storm? You better believe it. So in essence... He's putting them right out there in the middle of that storm. I want you to think about that. 
And let me tell you something. He puts us in the storms of life in order that we might grow closer to him, that we might know him better. Uh, as, as Paul said, that I may know him. All right. Well, storms help us to get to know him better. So he wanted to cross from the western side or Capernaum side over to the eastern side. And the reason that he needed to get away is because he needed to do something that was very human. How many of y'all have ever been so tired that you couldn't even hardly keep your eyes open? We've all been there. We've all been there. That's exactly what the Lord was like right here. He was so tired. He had had such a busy day. He had been going, 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 teaching, 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 dealing with people all day long. He was wore out. And he said, we got to get in this boat. We're going to go to the other side. Uh, uh, they, they were people all around him. And if he had even gone back on the shore, they would have, they would have surrounded him again and wanted uh, maybe healings and other things. So Jesus said, let's get in the boat. We're going to the other side. Knowing, Jesus knowing there was going to be a storm. Now, I love what it said there in verse number 36. They took him even as he was. They took him even as he was. Well, what was he is the question. Well, again, the question is, he was exhausted. He was in need of rest and sleep. And there's times in our life where that happens, all right? Of course, now they get in the boat, they're going along, and all of a sudden this storm breaks up, uh, breaks out. And uh, furious gusts, furious squalls, uh, uh, strength of a whirlwind, even a hurricane. And, and, and so now they're in the midst of this storm. Here's another thought. You know, we're, we're trying to live for the Lord. We're in God's will for our life. And how dare we ever think that we should not have any storms in our life. Even if we're doing right, even if we're in the will of God. Storms are still going to come into your life because these men were doing exactly what God wanted them to do. Get in the boat and get on the Sea of Galilee and go to the other side of the sea. They were doing exactly what Jesus told them to do, and yet it was not smooth for them at all. It became very, very stormy. And I'll tell you this much, it's when you're in God's will a lot of times that you often face the greatest opposition from Satan and from others. Satan wants us to fall and lose our testimony. Now, it says, of course, that Jesus was asleep during the storm. This story is also told over in Luke chapter 8. You don't have to turn there, but Luke chapter 8 uh, creates the impression that when Jesus got in that boat and his head hit the pillow, he was out. He was out. Y'all ever been like that? Oh, yeah. There comes times like that, so tired, your head hits the pillow, buddy. And I mean, you are out. You are gone. And so it just shows us how tired he must have been, but it also shows me something else. See, he knew there was going to be a storm, but even in the midst of the storm, who did he trust in? He trusted in his heavenly father. And of course, he knew everything was going to be all right. I got news for you. In the storms of our life, because Jesus is in the boat with us, folks, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. We get so tired sometimes in our trials and troubles. And uh, it, it just wears us out. I got news for you. It's going to be all right. Do we not live in a world surrounded by storms? Yesterday morning, you know, we got the news about Israel being invaded. And the way they were invaded was just horrible. I mean, it wasn't just people, you know, uh, uh, trying to bomb them. I mean, they actually sent people over and was, was killing uh, going door to door. Can you imagine you're in your house this afternoon and all of a sudden an invading force shows up at your door and, and, and you come to the door and all they want to do is shoot you and kill you or either drag you out and take you prisoner in some way? Well, that's exactly what was going on uh, over there as, as well as the bombs and other things. Uh, we see storms of life. There's wars and rumors of wars. We, we uh, 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 hear 
about, uh, you know, the natural disasters. We hear about accidents and, and just terrible things that happen to people. We hear about crime. We hear about rioting. We hear about violence, corruption all over the place, economic uncertainty. Uh, if you read the news, you see their stores in certain towns because these people don't, don't enforce the law that they just go in there and they just take anything they want to take. And, I, I, and I, I, I'm amazed at that kind of stuff, but we hear that and, and we see that stuff. And then, of course, the news media wants to sensationalize a lot of this stuff, you know, so that you'll watch it and you'll pay attention to it. And, man, they, they uh, really sensationalize everything and, and whip everything into a frenzy for ratings and, and drama. And, and listen, the, the person that can stay joyful and peaceful and calm in this kind of world is a rock. Because we're on the rock, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he's in the boat with us. The disciples were in the midst of a terrible storm. And these were experienced fishermen and they were scared out of their minds. Scared. You know, storms will cause us to be scared out of our minds. And whatever storm it may be, it could be a financial storm, a health storm, a family storm, a job storm, a relationship storm. Uh, 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 whatever it could be. All sorts of different kinds of storms. Listen, uh, a real storm for that matter. Uh, uh, but uh, they had no way at that moment of knowing this, the disciples. But God was just trying to teach them a lesson. And help them to grow. Again, if you never have trouble in your life, you're never going to be able to grow properly. It's painful sometimes, but that's the way God has made it. Storms are part of the process of spiritual growth. Matter of fact, if you're a mature believer here this morning, you can look back in your life and you can see plenty of storms in your life that God has brought you through. He has brought you through and you're stronger and better for it. You're tougher. For it. Jesse, Brother Jesse was telling me the other day, he said that, you know, he's got this back problem and I'm glad he's doing a little bit better today. But he said, uh, you know, when you got a back problem, you can't get out and do a whole lot. So you're sitting around. And he said, it's given me, a, it's given me an opportunity just to sit around and, and, and thank the Lord for all his many blessings. And I start thinking about all the things that God's done for me and been good to me. And, you know, I, I think that's sometimes I, I you know, I, I'm not God. I don't know why all that's happened in his life. But I think sometimes God allows trouble in our life so that we do have to just kind of sit around and think about him. Now, you can sit around and worry and be fretful or you can sit around and be thankful and and pray and ask God to move in that situation, whatever it may be. The back issues for Brother Jesse has made him appreciative of his other blessings. If you ever have back problems, you'll start thanking God that you uh, don't have that all the time, I can tell you. Amongst other things. See, James says this, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. In other words, being mature, being strong in the faith. See, again, if we didn't have storms in our life, you would be a spiritual pygmy. You would be insufferably self-centered, as I said earlier. You would be proud and you would be an empty kind of person without any adversity in your life, any toughness in your life. God even made it to where when you were little and you were learning to walk, it wasn't easy. It was tough. You had to struggle to even make it, to learn how to walk. Something we take for granted today, you know, we just get up and go walk. Okay? But at one time, you couldn't do that. And you had to struggle and work hard at it just to even be able to walk. God made it so that we have to struggle and work hard at things. But it makes us tough and stronger and more mature and more trusting in Him. And, and He wants us to get that fear out and that worry out. Well, you saw what the disciples said. You know the story. 
They went back there, you know, he's asleep. Here's this storm and he's asleep. He's sleeping through the storm. Now, folks, that's how we should want to live. When the storms come up in our lives, we just don't worry about anything. We pray about everything. We let the peace of God that passes understanding come into our lives. And then we just sleep through the storm. In essence. We know that God's going to handle it. But anyhow, what did they say? Master, carest thou not that we perish? Lord, help us. Save us. We're perishing. And it was a number of disciples saying different things you can just imagine. And uh, crying out different things. And boy, does that sound like us human beings. <sighs> Tough time in my life. God, you know, I just don't get this. I just don't get this, God. Are you asleep? Don't you care about me? If we're not careful, that will be us. If we're not careful, that will be us. Many people feel betrayed by God when trials come. They feel isolated by God. They're confused, you know. I, I, I didn't think something like this was supposed to happen to me. Even get in a rage, you know, get mad at God. But see, the point is the consideration of where God is in the midst of a life crisis. He is right there with us, folks. Listen, when they said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? I got news for you. They're chastising God. They're reproaching God. Do we mean so little to you, God? With death staring us in the face, how can you sleep? Don't you care whether we're going to be swallowed up by this angry deep? Don't you care what I'm going through? We, we start complaining to God. We start criticizing God even for not coming to our aid rather than just making our request and then trusting Him to answer. Say, well... I guess he doesn't care. Folks, the last thing we really want to do is start accusing God of not caring. Because the Bible says that his love and his care and compassion can never be taken away from us. Never. It's amazing how normally loyal and courageous people, when going through a tough time, can say things that they later regret. And how sad that is. But at least God will forgive us uh, for that. You know, a lot of people begin to think God doesn't love them, that God doesn't care, He's on vacation, uh, he's, he's worried about other things. But let me tell you something, God not only knows of the storm, but he is, he, is in, he is present in the midst of the storm with us, and all we have to do is confidently ask for His help. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you this. A lot of times you don't even know that you're in a storm or getting ready to go in a storm, but God knows what's going on all around you. Amen. And again, when you get to heaven one day, you're going to be amazed at all the things that God has saved you from that you don't even know about. And let me remind you, you don't know about tomorrow, but God does. Well, what did Jesus do? He stood up and he rebuked the wind and the, and the wave. Well, the wind dies down and the waves die down. And uh, it's just amazing. Jesus was not frightened. He was in full control of the storm, even when the winds were still roaring and the water seething. So we have two fears here. We have the disciples fearful of the storm and then afterwards uh, fearful of the Lord. Because he says, he says in verse 40, why are you so fearful? Talking about their wrong kind of fear. How is it that you have no faith? And then in verse 41, it says they feared exceedingly. In other words, they feared the Lord after they had seen him still the storm. Now, Jesus does not really reproach them here for a lack of knowledge. What does he reproach them for? Their fear. Their fear in the midst of the storm. That's what he reproaches them for. 
They, they had lost heart. They were a, a coward in, in the matter. And, and listen, the real threat to faith comes from not of lack of knowledge, but from doubt and fear. Let me, let me tell you something this morning, church. Listen to me. Christians, Christianity is not about being a wimp. Let me tell you something. If you're going to be the right kind of Christian, you're going to have to be tough. And these storms make us tough. And, and you're going to have to be tough and not a wimp in your Christian life. Matter of fact, Christianity is not for cowards. We are called to die to self, take up our cross, and follow Him. And when we follow Him, that's when our, our faith is at its best. And that's when we can, uh, of course, His power is visible. The disciples had no right to fear even in the midst of the storm. Because Jesus was right there and he's right there for us and then people say well you know uh, I, I've prayed about things and then people still die or things don't go my way and all of that I, I got that but let me tell you something in the counsel of God it may be his will that we die God doesn't heal everybody but then we should be uh, just with have great assurance that God's will is what is best in a situation we should uh, live in confidence of God and not in fear and not in worry. Listen, all the trials, all the suffering, all the challenges in your life have occurred for a reason. Again, we want to know why is this happening to me? Well, the reason it's happening to you is because, first of all, it's going to happen to you. And then second of all, God's trying to grow you and change you. How many of you have ever ironed a shirt? Anybody ever ironed a shirt? How many of you buy those shirts that you don't have to iron? Uh, uh, my wife appreciates that. Uh, they come out with those no iron shirts. But I, I still have a few shirts that she has to kind of press and iron up a little bit. And I'm glad she knows what she's doing. By the way, don't ever iron your clothes while you're wearing them. Um, we had somebody in our church years ago that did that, and um, I said, that's kind of dumb, but whatever. <laughs> All right? You got an old wrinkled shirt that you need to iron. What, what are you getting ready to put on that uh, shirt to get the wrinkles out? It's called heat. You don't, you don't get a little cold iron up there and do that. That's not going to work. What are you going to do? You remember, uh, I, I still remember going to my uh, grandmother's and great-grandmother's house, and they had those old iron irons that they would stick into the fire. You know, they wasn't plug-in type. They wasn't a plug-in type. They, you stick them in the fire and then pull it out and do the ironing with it. And those things weighed a ton. I mean, they weighed a ton. Uh, you know, uh, nowadays people use them for door stops and things, I think. But uh, anyhow, you, you plug in that iron, and what, what starts happening with that iron when you plug it in? You know, you adjust your heat and you get it hot. And then that shirt, minding its own business, hadn't, hadn't been bad other than it's a little wrinkled. All of a sudden, you put the heat to it. And that shirt, you can just see that shirt. Ooh, 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 ooh. The shirt is feeling that heat. But when you get finished with that shirt, what happens? All the wrinkles are out and it looks good. It's what it's supposed to be. Now, if you want to wear a wrinkled shirt, have at it. But uh, if you don't want to wear a wrinkled shirt, you're going to have to iron them or, or get the no iron things. But if you've got to iron it, it takes heat. And that's the same thing for God. God's trying to get all your wrinkles out. I'm trying to get all your wrinkles out, spiritually speaking. By the way, if you got wrinkles on your face, don't use the iron on it either. <laughs> so God puts the heat in your life. Don't let it go to waste. The disciples begin to realize something. Wow. This Jesus is something else. Man, He's truly God. And He's got this. He's big enough to get me through the storm. 
We've, you know, they had seen him heal people, even seen him cast out demons. But now he's got the power over the winds and the waves. See, that needs to be us, folks. A storm comes into our life, we say, well, God's got this. He's big enough to handle it. Now, I'm just going to keep on doing right. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to fear. I'm going to let his peace just overwhelm me. And see, when you became a Christian, you entered a cosmic struggle between Satan and, be and, and, and between the Lord. And listen, I want God to win. I want to trust in Him. And never forget, He always cares. He always cares. And He's always there. And we will come out on the other side. We will make it. Because God is big enough to get me through the storm. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I hope you all believe that this morning. And I hope you, maybe something that was said today will be a blessing to you. And I don't know exactly who needed this. We, I mean, we all needed it. But maybe somebody in particular. And I hope it's been a blessing to all today. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can be saved today. We're going to have an invitation. We would be remiss if we didn't. So if you don't know Christ, we want you to be saved today. Step out from where you are and come to the front. We'll show you from God's Word how to be saved. Father God, you are good to us, and thank you for this wonderful, wonderful story and what we could learn today. If there's somebody that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, may they come today. Lord, may we... Get rid of our fear. Increase our faith. Get rid of our worry. Increase our calling on you. Prayer time. May you bring peace into our life. Every day. Storm or no storm. Blessing the invitation now. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with us? Heads are bowed.